Hello, this is Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel, and I'd like to just answer a couple of questions that we're getting asked regularly, I think now, and that's about underfloor heating. The first question is, do I need to have a manifold? Can I just run my central heating pipes under my floor without going to the expense of having a manifold and a mixing pump and all the rest of it? Now, the purpose of the manifold predominantly is one thing to even out the flow between rooms, but the other reason you have it is to mix the return water with the incoming water so you cool the temperature of the underfloor heating down. And if you don't do that, you'll finish up like a cat on a hot tin roof. The floor will just simply get too hot. Having said that, in my bathroom, I've got a little system in there for precisely that reason that I just described, that I didn't want to put a manifold in there with a pump and a load of nonsense like that. All I wanted to do is warm up the tiles in the floor. Now, I could have used an electric tile warm-up system, but I'm not a great fan of them. I'd rather use the warm water. And because I had a towel rail already in the bathroom, I had the pipes running to and from the towel rail, the flow and return. Turn. So what I thought is, let's just take the return from that towel rail, as it's been cooled down slightly by giving up some of its heat. I'll just run that pipe under the floor on top of some insulation. So we're talking about the upstairs here. And what I did is I put some battens in, I put some Celotex insulation in there, cut that in there nicely. And then I simply laid the pipe on the top of the insulation, snaked it up and down, went through the joist with a little hole, snaked it up and down again. So under each space between the joists, if you like, was this central heating pipe running up and down. And when you go in there, all you feel is a kind of nice warmth that the tiles aren't cold, but they're not over hot. And the reason they're not over hot is because the pipe isn't in contact with the floor surface itself. Now, if you have the pipe without direct contact with the floor, it's fairly inefficient. If you were trying to do an underfloor heating system properly, you would want that pipe to be pressed hard up against whatever the floor surface was. So if you use something like aluminium spreader plates, which go between those joists, then the pipe lays in those, but those spreader plates have to be pushed up hard against the underside of the floor. Sometimes those spreader plates sag slightly between the joists if they're not particularly well sort of fixed, if you like tensioned when they're fixed, they tend to sag between the joists. And what that means is you're not getting 100% contact between that metal spreader plate and the floor covering. And then you get a massive drop off in efficiency because you're not getting that conduction. All you're getting is warm air, which is trying to heat the underside of the floor. Air is a good thermal insulator, if you like, and most insulation consists of trapping air. So it's not a great conductor. So if you've got an airspace between the pipe and the floor covering, it's not going to do a lot in terms of underfloor heating. For my purposes, it was just the right thing because it meant that we got a nice warm cavity, if you like. We got a nice warm space between the top of that insulation and the pipe going underneath. And the pipe is just running up and down. So what it tended to do is just warm the floorboards up, warm the tiles up, which were above it. It's got plywood, actually, I think I used. What it's doing is it's just warming that plywood up. When the central heating comes on, it just warms up over several hours. You get a kind of a thermal mess there, if you like, and it's a very nice system. So if that's what you're trying to achieve, by all means, abandon the manifold and then run it under the floor on its way back to the boiler and the floor won't be too hot. It's as simple as that. Now, the other question we get asked quite a lot is, do I need to dig up my floor? We're talking about ground floor here and put insulation under the floor in order to have underfloor heating. A lot of people love the idea of having underfloor heating, especially in the kitchen, but they're thinking, I do not want the disruption of having to dig up all that concrete just to put down some insulation and then put the pipe on top. If you don't do that, you're going to lose heat from the underfloor heating pipes straight through that concrete and that's quite considerable on its way of course you're going to create a thermal mass and you could argue that 
you're not going to lose as much through the floor as you might through the walls or the ceiling. You've got conductivity there, you've got concrete, you're warming the concrete up and it's going to be a waste of heat. So it's going to be a more expensive system to run. There's a penalty to pay. Now, you do get these low build systems. Most underfloor heating manufacturers have a low build system in their catalogue and that can vary from anywhere between say 16 millimeters, the very lowest build system. So that's an insulation tray if you like, and you've got a piece of pipe going through there. Maybe the pipe is 10 mil, maybe it's 12 mil. So you think about that, that's 16 millimeters. We've got 12 millimeters of pipe there. So underneath that pipe, we've got a mere four millimeters of insulation. Is that insulation going to do any good? Well, it's going to stop a little bit of conductivity. And if it's going to stop conductivity, it's certainly going to stop some of the heat transfer from that pipe into that floor screen. The colder the concrete is and the hotter the pipe, the more heat transfer you're going to get. So if you can keep the temperature of the underfloor heating low and just rely on that low temperature just to warm the floor up, it's not going to be so disastrous. It's worth doing just to get that surface temperature of the floor so that you haven't got cold feet. But when you come to heating a room, in other words, you want that underfloor heating to give you a warm room, get you up to say 21 degrees Celsius, you're going to lose a fair amount. So what I'm suggesting, okay, if you're going to go for a low build system, put the low build system in, try to run the low build system at a nice cool temperature, say a surface temperature on the floor of something like 27 degrees Celsius and that would be a flow temperature with the water say of going through maybe 40 degrees Celsius or something even lower than that but you can adjust that on your manifold and then see what happens. If you can have some radiators in the room as well, now I wouldn't normally recommend this but in this particular case if you can bring the temperature of the room up fairly quickly when you're using it, in other words you're going in the mornings, you've got a nice warm warm room because it's being heated by the radiators but you've also got a nice warm floor because the underfloor heating is doing its bit at a lower temperature and then in that case you can have your radiators running at something like 50 or 60 celsius you can have the underfloor heating running as i say at 30 degrees 40 degrees of water temperature for a 27 Celsius surface temperature. You're really looking at a hybrid system in these particular cases. Now you might say, really, I just don't want the radiators. The whole point of having the underfloor heating system is to get rid of the radiators. Of course, we all love that. You know, let's be realistic and let's try and do things which are sensible. The sensible thing to do would be to take up all that floor, put in a good layer of insulation. The more, the better, but at least 100 millimeters and then put the screed back down on top of that. The trouble with that is you have a system which is not as responsive. A low build system is very responsive because there's no distance between the floor covering and the pipe. So we're not heating up a great thermal mass. All we're trying to do is heat up the floor covering. And that means that when you switch that system on in the morning, it's gonna heat up the floor rapidly. So, you know, there's pros and cons to all these things. Some people would say underfloor heating isn't good because it doesn't take account of the great variations that we get in the weather. Although there are these great arguments to be had about the efficiency of one system over another, we have to bear in mind that when you've got a system which is capable of high temperatures and you can just turn it on, put a bit of heat into the house when you need it, turn it off when you don't need it, that for a lot of people is a much better answer than heating the whole house up to a given temperature that you're going to maintain day and night. Underfloor heating is a great thing, but if you can get insulation under it, it's a lot better. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see us soon. I'll get lonely in my shed.